Mike, are these YouTube comments that you've got on your screen here? No, these are completely fake comments that I've generated using a neural network. So I've trained it on YouTube comments for computer file. So basically, um, I've read a lot of computer file comments, and now I'm generating semi-plausible new comments uh, that talk about Linux and floppies and Java, for example. All kinds of semi-plausible things, but not really if you actually read it. Let's talk a bit about uh, recurrent neural networks. Um, we've covered neural networks a few times in our videos on machine learning, deep learning, convolutional neural nets, Google Deep Dream and this sort of thing. A lot of people are doing research in neural networks now and some of them are doing things like natural language processing. So things like um, trying to predict sentences or work out sentiment analysis from sentences. So things like, is this sentence a happy sentence or a sad sentence? Is this an angry tweet? or a relaxed tweet, right? I'm going to very briefly recap, but I would advise people to go back to these other videos first. So if you've got a neural network and you're trying to make some prediction on some text or anything sequential really, so we've got various you know, links going up here and, and like this, and we put in something in this side, let's say a sentence, and we want to predict something about that sentence, i.e. maybe what the next word is going to be, or uh, whether or not the, the, the sentence is uh, a positive or a negative one, or so, you know, this sort of thing. The problem is that this is a very fixed structure. It's not very good at sequential data. You can imagine that I might put the first letter in here, and the second letter in here, and the third letter in here, and as long as all my sentences have the exact same length and the exact same structure, that kind of thing will work. But as soon as things start to move around a bit, like words that we're looking for, like the, the, the first name of the person in the sentence or the subject, it's going to become much more difficult. So let's imagine, you know, using that example, that I'm trying to predict the subject of a sentence based on some sentences, right? So I've collected together lots and lots of sentences, and I've got lots and lots of the subject of that sentence, and I put all the sentences in and try and learn the subject. The problem is that the subject moves around in the sentence. Sometimes it's over here, sometimes it's over here. So this network has got quite a difficult job to learn not only how to determine what the subject is, but also how to do that when it could be anywhere. So you, you might say, um, you know, I went to the park on Tuesday, right? But you might also say on Tuesday I went to the park. So if you're trying to predict when you went to the park, you've got to learn a little, it's, like, it's more complicated than you perhaps first think. So what we really want to try and do is, is put in sequential data. We want to put in one word or one letter at a time and then try and make decisions on that. So we need some way of um, examining this over time. So if we simplify this into a sort of a different, slightly different structure, let's imagine we're training a very simple neural network to take characters, let's say T, H, E, and produce a, a guess as to what the next character will be. That way we can work out things like what the likely word. We could also, for example, have an output that, that measures sentiment analysis because it's starting to generate and work out structure of words. So let's say our input is T and then H and then E in a row, right? So we have our input nodes here of our network. We have our hidden nodes and we have some kind of learned mapping between these two things. And then we have an output, which is our prediction of what the next character will be, right? Now, in a normal neural network situation, although, uh, you know, this is, I've turned this now on its side a bit, essentially what we're trying to do is say, well, look, our output here is H or it should be H. So we, we go forward through the network, we see whether it guesses H, and we essentially calculate a loss and say, well, that wasn't very good, you, you thought it would be Z. And so we then adjust these weights here to try and make that a little bit better. The problem with this sort of structure is that we're only ever trying to make a decision based on one character input. So, you know, the, the letter that follows E is going to differ depending on what the other letters are. You know, it isn't always going to be an A or a T or something else. This is inherently going to struggle with this kind of problem. So what we do is we also want to bear in mind what we've seen before. We want to say, we've seen an H, but we've also seen a T previously. Can we make a better decision about what our output will be? Right? And we do that by basically making more weights and connecting up these hidden layers like this. This is essentially a recurrent neural network. This is sort of the, the expanded unrolled structure, but it's the same kind of principle. When we first start, this H is zero. We put in a T and it goes, well, I'm predicting, given a T, what the most likely letter is. It could be an H, it could be an A, it could be lots of different things, right? So we make, it, we make an attempt at guessing here. We don't know very much. We put in an H and we say, well, we've already seen a T. And we know that because it's stored somewhere in this hidden area. So maybe we can make a slightly better guess, right? We've seen a T, now we've seen an H. So, you know, it could be an E next for the, or it could be an A for that, right? That kind of, kind of guess. It's unlikely to be a Z. 
you know, unless people make lots of typos. We can predict maybe that this could be an E next. Then we actually do see an E now. And so we can put in here and say, well, we look, we saw a T, we saw an H, now we're seeing an E, can we make a really, an even more informed decision as to what's going on next? And it turns out we can. So we can say, well, it could be a space because it maybe we're at the end of the word, or it could be an A because this, the word is theatre, or an N because the word is then. There's lots of different ideas it could be. But you can imagine if this was very long, we could be bringing in words from previously as well. So we could say, well, look, and the is more, makes more sense than and then. Actually, that's not true. It doesn't really make more sense. It depends on the, you've got to have more sentence. The more sentence you have, the more powerful your, your, um, your prediction is going to be. And what this will actually predict is basically the likelihood of the next letter. So it will say, given T-H-E, I think the next output has a 10% chance of being an A, but a 50% chance of being a space. Right, and some other chances of being other characters, maybe. You, know, you get the idea. The only other interesting thing about recurrent neural networks is that the weights here and here and here are shared, so they are the same. Because otherwise, this one here would always be learning what it is to see the first character, and this one would be you know, seeing the first two characters. It doesn't generalize very well. So what we do is when we, when we train this network up, we actually train these hidden neurons to predict in the general case of wherever they are in the sentence. And that makes them really good at, ch at varying the length of the input. Right? So this works really well for YouTube comments, for example, because they're often different lengths. They might have a similar structure, but they're very, very different lengths. So I've sort of moved off my sentiment analysis and you know, word prediction kind of thing to a kind of character level, low level thing. But you could imagine if you just ignored these outputs here, and we have only one output at the end of a sentence, you could try and predict something like the sentiment of a sentence, whether it's a happy one, or predict um, the subject of a sentence or something like that. Right? So natural language processing lends itself quite well to this kind of idea. So I've trained one of these up and I thought, well, what I want to do is do some word prediction. There's lots of fun examples online and we'll link a blog, a really good blog post in the comments uh, of some really fun examples of predicting text. Right? You can basically create a neural network that does this and then basically just start generating random text. It's quite fun. So I thought, what text do I have access to which would be fun to generate? And then I realized that we have access to all the YouTube comments for computer file, right? All the historic YouTube comments for computer file. So what I've done is I've downloaded all the comments since the beginning of computer file, and I've put them into a network a little bit like this and tried to get it to predict more words. And it has a stab, right? So let's have a look and see what it does. So yeah, so this is um, one of our machine learning servers that I borrowed to just train up this recurrent network. The machine's name is Deadpool, and you're welcomed by an ASCII art Deadpool when you log in. Time well spent as far as I'm concerned. Now, it's the only server that does it. No one else seems to be interested. <laughs> now, wh what I described just now is, is a recurrent neural network in its sort of traditional form. The modern neural networks that we use to do this are slightly more powerful called um, long short-term memory networks. We'll cover maybe the architecture of those in a different video, but that's what I've trained here. Okay, so you know, YouTube comments come with things like uh, timestamps and what their comment ID is and who they've replied to and things like this. I decided not to make the, my life too complicated, so I got rid of most of that. And the structure, broadly speaking, is the word comment, then in brackets the person that commented, like cheese a diggity here, and then a colon, and then what they actually said, right? So, I haven't done any kind of filtering of expletives and things like this, so let's hope nothing comes up. But I have done things like remove slightly odd characters and things like this just to make, to make it a bit different. You've got to think that if you're training your neural network, you have to have output nodes for every possible character. So the fewer of those you have, the, the easier it'll be. The most recent comment would be, would be these. But, of course, I scraped these off a couple of weeks ago, and so maybe some more people have commented since then. Now, I've trained this network up, and basically, I, you know, I left it running for uh, a few hours, and what we're doing is we're, we're, we're putting in strings of text and having it learn what the next characters are likely to be. Right? So when it sees T-H-E, it's probably going to see a space or an N. When it sees comment space, it's probably going to put in a starting bracket, because that's the beginning of a comment. It's this kind of rules. Um, and then what we can do is once it's trained, we can basically just ask it to keep spitting out text based on the most probable letters. So we start it off, we say, right, go. And it says, well, there's, a, there's, there's, there's probably a fairly high chance that the first letter is a, a D, let's say. So it puts, puts out a D. And then it goes, well, given that we've seen a D, the next letter is probably an A, let's say. But it could be an E or it could be an R. So, and we pick one at random based on how likely they are. 
So we're always basically typing at random based on the suggestions of this network. Um, and it produces semi-plausible text. I mean, it is nonsense, but it's also not totally stupid. So let's see what it does. Based on my pre-trained network, I'm going to produce 5,000 characters of random text. And let's see what it looks like. Uh, so it'll just boot up for a minute and then it will run. It's pretty quick once it gets going. There we go. So you can see we've got comments, we've got replies. At first glance, it looks plausible. When you actually read into the comments, they're very bizarre. Let's pick a couple and see what's... All right, so, so this guy by Blorkythrop, now that might be a real person, but it probably is just a completely made up username. I was no pretty puzzling the code, gaming. So they would have found out something tread, the larger stop information. That's a bit <laughs> odd. Uh, this guy, Hessel200, has replied, I find your own difference. Profound, certainly. Ha <laughs> ha's use, useful, usually A, and so, full stop. I mean, it's got the punctuation correct, right? It's, it's finishing sentences with full stops. Let's try again. There's a long one there. There is. So some of them are very long. Neurons is who I match at humans, but for cooling of the most complex or magnetic consistent brackets, like a computer, to expect found in creating organisations. <laughs> the interesting thing about this is that, so sometimes you'll say, gets looking at YouTube mind to let you stand out. Now the sentence doesn't really make sense, but the words are actually spelt correctly. And YouTube, for example, has a capital Y and a capital T, which is you know, quite clever. And it's learned that usually when YouTube is seen there's a capital Y and a capital T but we're not picking the most likely letter every time we're picking one of the plausible possibilities so sometimes it's going to pick the wrong one so up because of the way we're sampling so it might say we've seen a Y-O-U-T-U-B if there's a 99% chance of an E but there's also a 1% chance of a space and so it'll put in the space that 1% of the time so sometimes you're going to see typos basically using this approach what well, another interesting thing is the reply sometimes um, specify the target of the reply with this plus, plus another username, also probably messed up. This username, Ice Metal Punk, appears quite a lot in my output. Now, I actually think that that's a real username, so if you're watching, you know, congrats. You've posted so many times on our comments that my network has learned your name and is now just generating your comments for you. It's just, this is quite fun, right? It, it, this alone is... I mean, I've, I'm quite impressed by this. People might be thinking, well, it's just generating nonsense. But you've got to consider that this is quite a small neural network looking at the random stuff on computer file comments, bearing in mind lots of different types of people commenting, lots of different video content. Um, and it's learned a kind of broad structure for a comment system. It's got comments, it's got replies, it's tagging people in replies, it's making up usernames, it's learned some people's usernames. I mean, it's, it's surprisingly impressive. In the blog post that I linked to, there's some, some other really impressive examples of the sort of things these things can do. This has got uses in things like natural language processing, but convolutional versions of these things are starting to see use in image processing as well. Can we, for example, start to do things over video sequences or over three-dimensional data, things like this? So. LSTMs and recurrent neural networks are going to see a lot of use going forward because they can do some really impressive things over time. Oh look, so that's interesting. Is that it gone wrong? Yeah, people tend to put numbers in in a row, let's say when they're typing out you know, big numbers or something like that. So when it starts with numbers, it tends to just get stuck in a loop, just producing more numbers. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. This is not infallible, as you might have noticed from the grammar. Obviously, this is a bit of fun, but could this be used as a chatbot or something like that? Is that I mean, theoretically, it could, yes. The, 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 the text that I've trained this on is far too broad, in some sense, to make a reasonable chatbot, because clearly none of it makes any sense. I mean, you might get the occasional sentence that kind of makes sense or seems a bit like broken English, but it's not that useful. If you targeted this, though, at, let's say, someone's own emails, it would start to probably generate quite plausible emails of theirs. Um, or suggest words, for, so for example, for auto-completion purposes. Usually what we would be using this kind of thing is not for necessarily generating text, but to make some decision based on what it's seen. So it's, because it can chain together all of these kinds of sentences, you can think it's starting to look at least 50 or 100 characters into the past, we can start to maybe do sentiment analysis or do predictions of, of a kind of sentence or the content of a sentence. Um, this is the kind of perhaps, perhaps more practical purposes of this, right? apart from just a bit of fun. I like this one, great video. See, now, we, now we're getting somewhere. Computer file sounds more helpful. Than, than what? It doesn't go into detail. <laughs> He's working with the phone customization. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're not ready to take over the world with this network yet, but you know, one step at a time.
People complain about my fingerprints on my monitor when I have it off. Yeah. Um, but I haven't cleaned it yet because oh, I'm lazy. Um, right. I'd have thought by now, with all these views on YouTube, you'd have someone to clean that for you. But, and yet no one's appeared. <laughs> Unbelievable. I know. There is a reply from Computer File, though, if you notice. Where was that then? About uh, five lines up from the. Oh, and there's a reply from Professor Dave B as well.